Hey, what's up guys, JB here. Welcome back to Future Look. Today we're gonna to be looking at the latest addition to another story over on the Japanese side. Uh, and his name is Viga. And he'll be joining Risal as another Apostle of the Void in that story. And he is set to join the lightning element that has recently received a very powerful frontline tank in Alphonse Elric. And was also one of the more powerful elements in 2022. Now, Viga is going to be the latest in a string of 100 cost units to the point where it has actually just become the new normal. So how does he actually set himself apart, you know, in a landscape that has been infused with so many powerful new units? Well, let's dissect his kit today and let's find out for ourselves. So Viga is a 100 cost lightning unit. He has a base 3-1 movement and he can wear hats and cloth. His TMR is an accessory with decent defensive stats. The effect on it though is very unique. It provides one cast to protect while also increasing your chance to land Berserk on the enemy by 25%. So this is essentially a way to have some counterplay against uh, enemies that may be using a 3-star Esper or maybe a Trust Stone passive to try and block that particular status ailment. In terms of this effect actually enhancing your chance to land that status ailment, we've never actually seen this before on any item in the game, so I, I really do like that new development and I do hope that we see more of it uh, coming here into the future. I think it's something that you can really build niche strategies around and uh, again have that sort of counterplay against some of the new uh, resistances that have been added in the game for that. Now it is something that Viga himself can actually use and take advantage of. As we'll see in his kit here in a few minutes, he does actually have Berserk in his kit. Notably though, this could be good for some other units in the game, uh, King Mont probably being chief among them, but there is also Satya with her Berserk arrow and then the Hunter class I believe has that as well. Now moving down into his stats, and we are looking at another Bruiser archetype here today. I believe that does make three in a row now that we've looked at here on the channel. And again, we are starting off with a very strong HP pool at almost 4,900 HP at level 120. That is approaching a tank level of hit points here. His base attack of 399 is pretty decent also. He doesn't get a ton to add on to that on his board. So, so his innate value here, you know, while above average, is not going to be top tier. Everything else though across the stat line is very much middle of the pack. Uh, Dex, luck, and agility all hovering at or, or just a tick below the UR averages. In terms of agility though, he comes out in a pretty decent spot here overall as he does have access to an agility based passive here that he can equip. Now those middling stats there, you know, do impact his accuracy, evade, and crit totals that you can see here. Nothing standing out here in any way among them. Now looking at his mastery, he is going to be doubling down on that lightning attack power. He gets a 30 total here between the elemental mastery and then that 15 bonus. And then he is picking up 30% acquired AP on top of that as well. Defensively, he is starting out with 12 defense and zero spirits. His main resistances are going to be to magic and strike, coming in at a very strong 20% to each. He has 10% against slash and he is going to be neutral to missile. His only weakness here is going to be against pierce damage, but it is coming in at just a negative 5 value. So this does actually make two units here in a row with very strong strike resistance right out of the box. Something that we really hadn't seen all that much in the game up until recently. As generally in the past, we were seeing most units coming in with a weakness there to strike damage. For ailment resist, he is strong against poison and berserk with a lesser resist to confuse. So not really resisting any of the big ones that we're seeing in the game currently, but uh, of course for the mirror match against another Vigo or if you're going up against a King Mont, that innate berserk resistance is always nice to have. Now touching on the transcendence upgrades here for Vega, if you do take him all the way up to level 140, he is going to be tagged of course as a frontline physical attacker, so no surprises there. So once again, he'll have the standard stats available to him there, you know, within that reincarnation system. And I don't actually include these stats, you know, within my mock build or, or even within that stat view we were just looking at. They are completely standardized and also variable, of course, you know, depending on how many times you actually reincarnate the unit. So I don't actually find it all that useful to, uh, you know, include it in those particular views. Of course, though, it is very useful to know what is available there so that you can kind of know what is the ceiling or max potential for the unit. Now at level 140, you know, he is going to be picking up another mastery ability and, you know, it is actually quite good, you know, as far as those go. He's going to get another 15% HP, so just add on another 600 plus hit points to that total we were just looking at. Crucially here, he does get some added mitigation as well. He's going to get 15 single target resistance. Now most units we've seen coming through the game as of late are getting, you know, a bunch of area resistance, which Vega doesn't have. So this is kind of, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a different look, but with some of the new multi 
multi-select skills we've been seeing in the game, I think that it is very useful to have. The main piece of his upgrade here, though, is a pretty significant upgrade on his job 25 ability, not only increasing the range on it by one, but, but also making it a guaranteed hit skill. And we'll be taking a closer look at that ability here shortly. Moving on now into Vega's passive and counter abilities, and the ones he comes packaged with, you know, actually do offer him a couple of different build paths that you can opt for. Build one is gonna be for all out offense. You can take options one and two here, which will get you that big attack boost and notably 40% defense and slash res penetration. Although this first passive here is very nice with the three different effects it comes with, I think if you do happen to have Esther's vision card, it is very droppable to maybe go in another direction. Out of passive options one and two here, I do think that that second one for the defense pen is much more important. For general play, you know, 40 to 50% damage type penetrations, I think is enough to generally be competitive, you know, cause you can actually add on more, you know, when it comes to equipment and vision cards and etc. And then even more so when you do have access to an active buff, which can increase those penetration values even further. So in Vega's case between Esther's vision card and equipment passives, he's gonna easily be able to get there and beyond, even if you don't take options. One. Now doing that will allow you to sort of branch out into some of these other build paths that I've noted here. You can opt for that Thief's Lore clone for the agility and the plus one move, or you can go for option five here to grab even more hit points and then that healing power, which would be really useful if you were running support behind him like Resnick, for example. Now for counter abilities, he gets a really nice one from his new unique job. It has a range of three with a base 30% chance to trigger. It will counter with a low mod attack and it will absorb 30% of any damage done. This skill can be upgraded from one of his active skills as well. And when he does that, it will temporarily be increased to an 80% chance to trigger. It will increase the range by one and then also increase the damage of the attack up to a medium modifier of 165. If that weren't enough, it does make it a guaranteed hit ability on the counter as well. So that is quite insane. And, and we'll look a little bit closer to that here in a moment. I think it's probably safe to say that, you know, the majority of times you will want to be running this counter, but he does have a physical reflex available to him as well, which is another very nice option. So let's take a look at Vega's main kit here next, and we're going to start with his buffs. Buff number one is very simple, but very effective. It's a three hit physical barrier, but at that increased 70% damage reduction potency. So very powerful barrier here. And you know, good luck doing much damage, if any, against him if you do not have a barrier break. His second buff is also gonna amp up that survivability. It's gonna provide 20% strike and magic resistance to both himself and his allies for three turns. And it's also going to bestow re-raise on himself. And he does get two casts of this skill. It is pretty rare to see strike resist buffs in the game, especially ones that you can give to other allies. Ildira with her EX is really the only one that I can think of offhand. It is also a little bit rare to see a physical based damage dealer who is not only innately strong against magic attacks, but then also has this buff available to them to even take that even higher. So Vega can actually build a pretty substantial magic resistance uh, if you were to you know, focus on that a bit in your build. Now shifting over to his attack skills here next. Skill one is a range three, range height one, as a low 121% mod. Just a single effect here, which is a 25% chance to paralyze the target. Now there's certainly an argument to be made for this unit that you would want to run him at a higher faith, so could potentially see some value out of this skill. Skill number two is gonna be a range four, range height one, comes in with a large 200% modifier. Prior to the damage, it will break the target's defense by 25, and it is a guaranteed hit ability. And the modifier on this skill can escalate up to a massive 275% if Vega were to take two hits in battle. So that combined with that pre-damage break is gonna have this skill hitting like an absolute truck, and the potential is here to one-shot many units out there with this particular skill. Now skill number three is gonna be a three by three block area of effect with a total range of four and it has a medium 165 mod. And this was actually one of the skills I was referencing in the passive abilities overview. It's gonna provide that three turn buff of 40% slash res penetration. It does come along with a second effect as well. It will drop the CT of the targets by up to 20. So very nice skill here. You know, not only does it enable that potential flexibility with your passives, but it does come with that above average sized area of effect. Skill 
Skill number four is his job 25 ability. Again, it's getting up to a range of four with a range height of two there on the cross AoE. Has a large 200% modifier. Prior to the damage, it will dispel re-raise. Now, as mentioned earlier, if you do take Vega up to level 140, this skill gets an added range, bringing it up to a total of five, and it does make this a guaranteed hit ability. So in that regard, it will give him access to both a single target and area of effect guaranteed hit, both with large 200% modifiers. And that's definitely going to enable him to be a very strong evade hunter, you know, even despite having that subpar innate accuracy. Now, last up is going to be his LB here. It has that burst or half diamond shaped area effect pattern. And prior to the damage, this has a general dispel effect. Post damage, you know, similar to King Mont before him, this has a very high chance to berserk the targets. Berserk, of course, is one of the more dangerous status effects out there because not only do you start resorting to auto attacks and lose complete control of your character, but you do take 50% increased damage as well. So this limit burst here is now a viable way for a lightning team to even take down their counter element in Earth actually quite easily if you manage to land this LB on a couple of units. Now, thankfully, the dispel effect that comes in on this skill does not remove Elia's TMR buff, which does nullify Berserk completely. So I do think that that TMR could be seeing quite a bit more use, you know, once Vega does come into the game. Now, just commenting on the kit here as a whole, I think one thing that you might notice is that the skills here do carry, you know, quite large AP costs. This is not a unit that really has any built-in AP consumption decreases, you know, as we've seen on quite a few other recent units. So I think that does make this unit, you know, quite AP hungry and it's definitely something that you will need to consider, you know, when building this unit. So let's take a look at Vega's sub jobs here next, and we'll start with his main job. He's going to pick up two additional skills. The first one is an attack. It's got a total range of four here on the cross AoE. It's coming in with a medium 165 mod. Pretty basic skill here, nothing all that exciting. It's just getting that 20% agility break there post damage. So skill number two is quite a bit more interesting. It's another buff for him. And, and this is the one we talked a little bit about earlier that gives him that super counter ability. Uh, it lasts for three turns. It, it also gives him 40% HP, which is nice. So I think it really does encourage you to maybe want to run him up front and, and actually maybe take some hits while he has this active there early in the fight. And again, it's something that is even gonna be strong against evade units because this counter upgrade does make that a guaranteed hit. Now, in terms of the other sub jobs here, Vega is gonna be getting Martialist. Uh, he's the first unit in the game that we've seen with this particular sub job. This is the job that came in with Urel a few months back. Now, notably, he's gonna get access to Courage here from this sub job, although it is only a single use. Now, of course, he will be getting a few strike-based attacks here in the job, uh, as well as a 60% attack buff here that he can use as well. That area of effect strike attack, Pierce of the Heavens, does come along with an active defense penetration buff for three turns there as well. So yet another way that he's able to buff up his uh, penetration values. Now, last up here, Vega is going to get access to the Dragoon sub job. Uh, it is one of the oldest jobs in the game, but out of all of the job revisions, I, I do believe it got one of the better upgrades. That passive ability that it has for starters, getting that healing power is very nice. Dragonskin now is quite an excellent buff. It's going to add that protect effect as well as the reaction block there in addition to the nice attack buff. The dragon job has long been a favorite in the manual arena as well. Uh, not only do you get dragon standard there, which you can actually buff his mobility even higher, you can actually get him up to a base 5-2 movement after you use that skill. But it does also give him access to the jump ability, which is a way that you can approach maybe camping enemies. You can stay up in the air, especially if you have that at just a level one to sort of increase that cast time on it. So pretty good sub jumps here for Vega all around. I can definitely see a time and place for using, you know, each and every one of them. So a new weapon-based vision card was released the week following Vega's debut in the game, and it is another Curl VC, actually. Uh, this one, I think, is way more badass looking, uh, so I have just named it King Curl here on the slide. Now this card will be effective for axe jobs, ninja blades, and both staff groups as well. The base stats and bestowed ability here, I think, are pretty standard fare, nothing all that exciting. I'm much more keen on the party effects on this one though. It is one of the rare job cards in the game so far where all of the party effects are pretty universal to anyone that would use the card. And those effects are reaction block, magic resist, and single target resistance. So I do like this card for that reason. It, it makes it a little bit more flexible in how you can use it. And that single target resistance alone, you know, actually makes it a card that I would consider using. You know, it is one of the nicer effects to have in your party. 
Reaction block two is a stat that I've always liked personally, just to, to an immense hatred for the reflex ability. But it is a stat that I think has increased in value over the past year or so of the game, pretty much ever since Asterius, you know, came into the game with that insane prescient counter ability. Then there has been another jump, you know, post third anniversary, starting with Sephiroth, where even some units can have multiple counters online at once. And, and then finally Vega here that we looked at today with that insane 80% chance to proc counter. So it's definitely a much more defensive focused card here, but I do actually like this one quite a bit. Now shifting over to who can actually use the card here. I think Lightning, Earth, and Dark are probably benefiting the most, at least right now from a mono perspective. Now, as always, there's certainly some interesting and eclectic mixed elements element opportunities here, but nothing really super compelling that's really standing out to me at this moment. Maybe once we can more easily mix Amnilis over into an Earth Party, it might gain a little bit more value at that time. Now this card does come with the new Curl Esper as well, and once again it will be Lightning Element. The main highlights here is going to be another 20 Agility Esper, so, so matching the top in the game there along with Odin, Shiva, and Dark Ramu. This is the first Esper we've seen in a while with some acquired AP on his board, and he has, gets a significant amount there with 15% on the board. And I do think that will be pretty important for Vega. Aside from that, he's going to have that standard 25 Lightning Attack. Some resists here he can pick up, including Strike Resist, which has been and somewhat rare to find on espers and then there is some slash resist and crit rate on there as well for good measure now on top of that we are going to have a brand new weapon launching alongside vega as well i roughly translated this one as the black dragon axe and i think it does look like a pretty cool weapon i am highlighting the assault version here in my opinion for vega specifically his base decks and crit values are in a really poor position it's going to take a lot of focus to get him to a point where he's going to be critting reliably so for that reason i do think that the assault version is the best option for him it is a pretty strong straightforward elemental weapon here, you know, akin to others that we've seen in the past. It's going to offer 15 slash attack and then the 30 lightning attack there as its unconditional passives. Now lightning as an element overall does have a small handful of these elemental weapons at this point, so definitely another one to add into your collection. Although for the lightning element in the particular, I don't think they have any other axe users that can really take advantage of this one. All right, flashing over to our timeline now for 2023. Now here in global, we did just receive Amnilis. It was quite a surprise having her come in you know just about a month early but we did have some free weeks to fill here in the schedule for global so I think it is a good thing to sort of spread out some of those 100 cost units a bit more as you can see during that third anniversary it, it is still quite busy there but uh, this does make it just a tiny bit better now for Vega he is currently projected to come in during that first week of June and we do have Alphonse you know also for the lightning element that will be coming in maybe about just a month before him and I do think that those two are gonna form quite the formidable sort of one-two punch you know sort of anti-physical core for your team on the counter pick side though we are looking at rurugia and bradley they're going to be coming in for the earth elements now missile damage in particular as we saw in the stats overview he is just neutral against that so it could be one potential area that you might be able to exploit against vega here Especially with Rurugia, since he does have that follow-up attack, which would be able to deal with either Courage or Re-Raise on Vega here pretty nicely. Now, both Bradley and Rurugia do also have Barrier Break attacks in their kits as well, so they can actually dispel one of Vega's main sources of survivability. Definitely a couple of matchups that you will want to watch out for if you do go for Vega here in the future. Now, aside from those developments, we are getting ever so close to that third anniversary, and with the shift up of Amnilis, I think it does open up maybe some potential for yet another global exclusive that we might see come in either just before that third anniversary or you know sometime during that you know five to six week span that it is going on so we'll have to wait and see you know what's in store for us on that front but personally i do hope for roberta coming over from final fantasy brave exvius and i would be super excited if that comes to pass all right guys so here is a mock build that i've put together for vega and this time we're going to be going for an anti-strike build uh, during this time frame that vega has come into the game we should be seeing some experimentation with different fist teams at that point there will be six very nice job or weapon type vision cards that will work on fist jobs and of course there will be several new strike based units that can come in and leverage them very nicely so we're going to be building off vega's strong base strike resistance and that self buff that he has to even augment it a bit further and for this anti-strike team we're going to be pairing vega here alongside another lightning element unit in esther i think that they are similar units in quite a few ways and they do complement each other's kits very nicely 
nicely. There's not actually a ton of overlap, you know, between their kits. And Esther herself does have a significant amount of base strike resistance to build off of as well. So this is going to be a double bruiser party, and we're going to back up both of those bruisers with Resnick, one of the best support units in the game. Now, starting with his equipment, we're going to be using that all new Dragon Axe, and I'll pair that with the Survival Vest. And we'll do that to not only boost our defense, but also get that 10 unit resistance there on top. And then it will stack very nicely with the 15 that Vega gets as part of his 140 Awakening. Now for his TMR, we are going with Bradley's TMR here. We don't have a source of haste on this team, so this is a good one to use for that. If you did want to go all in on that Berserk Bomb play with his Limit Burst, you could also look at his own TMR there as well to sort of boost your chances for that. Now for Vega's Esper, we're going to be using that all new Curl Esper that we were just looking at. Not only for the nice offensive bonuses and the agility, but we are going to be pulling in that 15 Strike Resist there that was on the board. Now for the Vision Card setup, we are going to be using that Trifecta setup from Mono Light. We're pulling in area resist there from the lightning vision card. We have agility from Salir versus Rachess. And then finally the single target resistance there coming in from Esther's vision card. And in my view, it really is this card that really makes Vega an even better and more flexible unit on global than he is on JP. And if you are going for a mono setup with him, you know, this card is a must have. I do also really like the Igoyan card there that I have in his secondary slots. He's going to get huge value from that, you know, not only from the 20% HP value and the slash attack modifier, but he is going to get some additional slash res penetration there on the bestowed effect. Now for trust stones here in the build, I am going with HP and agility sets here. I'm not going to be focused on accuracy here for Vega, you know, just because he does have that two very nice guaranteed hit abilities that we did look at earlier. It's going to be a pretty straightforward setup here though for the passives. Of course that strike resist is going to be a key one for the build goal that we have today, but also that healing power there on the right side is definitely another key one, especially for the sort of health pool that we have for Vega here. As you can see in the stats, he's going to be at just about 12k HP. Now, as always, if you are interested in taking a finer look at the details of the build, I will go ahead and pop a link to that in the description below. So please take a look. So what is my verdict today on Vega? I feel like I've been saying this a lot as of late, but this is yet another strong bruiser that's entering the game here. Again, I think that is three in a row now that we've looked at here on the channel. The overall bruiser package that we're getting here is quite thorough, as this will be the first unit that we've been seeing come into the game since Zazan the Unkillable that has access to both Courage and Reraise innately. Now, adding on to that, he has that insane tank tier health pool. He's got nice defense and resistances. He has an access to a 70% physical barrier, and he even has physical reflex if you please. And for me, that's going to represent one of the best bruising kits that we've seen come into the game to date. And that's going to make this unit pretty difficult to take down because he can even be built, you know, pretty strong against magic damage as well, which has been one of the key ways to take units like this down in the past when you consider units like Esther and others like her. Now, despite having that very weak base accuracy, Gumi did decide to give him not one, but two guaranteed hits there in his main kit. And they do double as his most potent and damaging attacks as well, coming in with those large 200% modifiers. In terms of comparables to him in the game, I do see him in a very much a similar spirit, a similar vein to a Halloween Lucia, but to be honest, he is just even more bulky and survivable than her. He's also not going to be suffering from her lack of damage type penetration, as it's really not all that hard to get this unit in a position where he's completely ignoring slash resistance, especially in the global version of the game where that Esther vision card makes it quite trivial. Now, with all of that said, I have to say it was somewhat difficult to come up with real true weaknesses for this unit. I think he's going to be a handful even for Earth units going up against him, much in the same way that Esther was on her initial release. If I am nitpicking, though, there are a few things to watch out for, you know, a few that we did touch on here in the video. He does, of course, have that pierce weakness, and he is just neutral to missile damage, so definitely some potential areas that you're going to look to exploit in going against this unit. And certainly as more units are coming to the game, which can dodge guaranteed hits, at least for a few turns, that will represent another potential problem area for this unit as well. If those units can actually take Vega down quickly enough to really take advantage of it. Personally though, I think one of his biggest weaknesses is how AP hungry he is. And that's not something that we've been seeing all that often on more recent units. A lot of them have been coming in with those AP consumption decreases. So it's something you'll definitely need to account for in your builds when you are using Vega. Things like an AP Trust Stone set, maybe Velus's TMR, or, or maybe even Ziza's Bells could be in the picture, you know, when you're using him. 
Now, in terms of the utility that Vega is coming in with on his skills, probably my biggest knock on him is going to be that lack of barrier or protect removal. And outside of sort of building up any lightning resistance and going up against Vega, those are going to be the main tools that can really slow him down. So you are going to want to look towards units who can complement Vega in that way and sort of bring that utility. And I do think that is one area where Esther can help him out. Uh, she does have that barrier break innately in her kit. And she actually does bring some very nice debuffs that can really amp up Vega's damage quite high. Now I did manage to get through all of that there without mentioning anything about the Limit Burst and that Berserk Bomb play that he has in his back pocket. Now for folks out there who didn't play back in the heyday of King Mont after he was first released, it is something that you will absolutely need to account for, you know, when you are going up against Vega. Because if you don't, I'll tell you right now, that LB alone is game winning in of itself. Alright guys, so that is Vega, the latest addition into the game coming in from the Void of the Darkness story. If it wasn't apparent enough from my verdict, there. In judging his kit, I am very high on this unit. I think every so often Gumi releases one of those units that really just jumps off the page. You can go back and look at my reaction, you know, months in advance on a unit like Flagbear Glaciella, in that the weaknesses of this unit aren't really all that easy to expose, at least with what we have in the game currently. And for that reason, you know, I do believe that this unit has the potential to be one of those meta-defining or meta-shaping kind of units, and one that Gumi is going to be trying to counteract in the game for weeks and months to come. So those are going to be my thoughts here today, but I want to know now what you guys are thinking out there. Do you think this unit is the new big bad in the game, or is he just another lightning slash unit to add into your collection? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video today, hit that like button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And that's really all that I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.